Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna need my sunscreen, my snorkel gear. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna need my tennis shoes for all the adventures we're gonna go on. Fourth graders, are you ready to go on this crazy adventure with me? Oh, I gotta get this out of the way. And then I gotta, gotta give you guys information so you know what we're doing today. All right. Hey guys, I am Mrs. Lawson and I am one of your ELA teachers in the Topeka Public Schools and I am so excited to get started with you and show you what we'll be doing together. So let me share with you what adventure we're going on today. So before any adventure, you need to know what to bring and what to be prepared with. So just like with that, with class, um, what you're going to need is you're going to need a notebook and a piece of paper when we're following along in class to write down any observations or any questions that you might have. So if you don't have that with you, go ahead and go grab that now. Now, let's look at what story we're starting with today. It is called Porpoises in Peril. And if you're like me, you might read that and think, what in the world is a porpoise? That's a great question, and I'm glad that you're asking that question because it means you're paying attention and you're a good reader. So let's hop into these slides and see if we can figure that out. So first off, we need to look at what are we trying to understand today? Today we are learning to use details and examples from the text to explain our understanding of the problems in the story. So this is a scientific story. So they are finding problems and they're trying to help. So we are gonna know we are successful at the end of this lesson when we can look back in the text for details that describe the problem. And then we're gonna use those details to help us describe what we're trying to tell the audience about. So when you're doing your reading lessons, we are gonna have a foundational skill or a vocabulary activity for you to complete. Your teacher might assign this to you on Seesaw, or you might just be completing this with your pencil and your piece of paper. So today's foundational skill that we are starting with is when you add ED to a verb, it tells about something that happened in the past. So this verb that we are looking at right here is sprint. And when I add the ED, it says I sprinted in the past. Another one is chuckled. So if you see that ends with an E already, chuckle. And so you're just gonna put that D on the end, it chuckled. So now it all happened in the past. It's no longer happening right now. Another form of verb that we're working with is ING. When we add ING to a verb, that tells about something that continues to happen. So if you're sitting, like I'm sitting right now, it's continuing to happen. Or again, I'm speaking, I'm speaking right now. If you add the ing, it's telling me something is happening now. So today we don't have an activity with that. It's just your introduction to what we're working on for the next few lessons. Vocabulary is one of Ms. Lawson's favorite things to learn about. So what I like to do is I like to introduce you the word contaminated. If you don't know what the word is, I like to give you a picture to look at and be like, hmm, can I figure it out through the picture? If you don't know it yet, then I'm gonna show you it in a sentence. And you're gonna try and use that fourth grade brain of yours and that really smart brain to see if you can figure out what that word means. Because the porpoises have been losing weight quickly, the officials believed that something or someone has contaminated the local food supply of these sea animals. So they contaminated the food supply. And then I look at this disgusting water and I think, what could contaminated mean? Think in your head. Now let's see what it does mean. It's something made dangerous or dirty by adding something harmful or undesirable to it. Is that what you put? Awesome. So next one is population. Hopefully you guys know what this is. There's a sign down here that says in Kansas City, the population is 459,787. In this book, they're talking about the porpoise population. So there is a risk that the porpoise population will decline and that eventually all the porpoises will die. So the officials have asked for our help. So what does population mean? Population is the whole number of people or animals living in a certain area. So it could be the people in Kansas City or the porpoises in a certain area of the ocean. Again, we're still wondering what in the world is a porpoise? Well, here you go, guys. This is a porpoise. A porpoise is a sea animal 
<clears throat> and if you look at it, it's pretty similar to a dolphin. They have a short rounded snout. And then again, that population is the body of porpoises. So the group of porpoises that live in a certain area. So my challenge for you is for today, let's try and use those vocabulary words in a sentence. So your teacher may assign this to you on Seesaw, or you might just be doing this on your own on a piece of paper. But I challenge you to try and use the word contaminated, population, or purposes in a sentence. Good luck. Now we are on to the adventure, on to the story. We are focused on the science squad. They are Cam, Kate, Jada and Reggie, and they are going on this adventure to help the porpoises in peril. So if something is in peril, it means it's kind of in trouble. So let's see what is going on with those porpoises. Chapter one. Chapter one. Jada sprinted into the headquarters of the Global Environmental Research Agency known as GERA. She gave up five she ran up five flights of steps, opened the door labeled training, and saw her science squad colleagues sitting around the lab tables, flipping through a fat pile of papers, their new assignment. Thank you for joining us, Professor Q said. Aw, I lost, said Cam, looking dejected. Lost what? A rare plant? asked Jada as she slipped onto a chair and pulled a tablet from her backpack. Cam was a botanist and, a backyard green and had a backyard greenhouse full of rare plants. No, I lost the bet with Kate, said Cam. I bet that you'd be late for our meeting and now I have to buy her lunch. Cam sighed. But speaking of plants, I have a new one that you have to see. It, hold on, said Kate. If he starts talking about plants, our meeting will last twice as long. Kate's dark eyes sparkled while Reggie, the fourth member of the squad, chuckled. The professor pushed the forward button on her wheelchair and glided closer to the others. She moved her long braid from her left shoulder to her right shoulder. That was the signal that she was ready to discuss an important environmental problem. She looked straight at them and said, sick porpoises. Reggie snapped his pencil in half and his shoulders tensed. He hated to hear about any animal being sick, whether a wild one or a pet. So look at those porpoises that we're thinking about. Professor Q continued. Oop, we got that stop sign. So I like to look at the stop sign before we read the page so we know what we're looking for. So why do officials in Taiwan think something has contaminated, so main dirty, the local food supply for porpoises? So we're looking at why do officials think something has contaminated the food supply. Local officials spotted several porpoises near an island off the northern coast of Taiwan, exhibiting uncharacteristic behaviors. Because the porpoises have been losing weight quickly, the officials believe that someone has, someone or something has contaminated the local food supply of these sea animals. There it is right there. So it says right here, because those porpoises have been losing weight quickly, that's why something's wrong with their food. Because if you don't have anything to eat, you're gonna lose weight, right? So something's wrong with their food is what they think. Oop, we got another question. Why does the professor believe that this problem is urgent with the porpoises? So we're gonna look as we read. There is a risk that the porpoise population will decline and that eventually all the porpoises will die. So the officials have asked for our help I do not have to tell you the importance of maintaining the proper ecological balance in the world's environment. One mishap in one part of the globe can have disastrous effects on the opposite side of the world. The science squad members looked at each other. They knew how important this was. So basically said it right here. I do not have to tell you how important this is to maintain the balance in the world's environment. So basically they're saying it. right now it's like a scale, it's balanced, but if something's off here, something's gonna be off on the other side of the world. So we gotta keep that balance. We gotta keep things as they are or things are gonna be crazy everywhere. 
When do we leave? Reggie asked excitedly. Your flight departs in two hours, Professor Q answered. I've made airline and hotel reservations for you and your GERA credit cards are loaded with enough money for living expenses and any emergencies that might arise. Jada has all the information on her tablet and the rest of you have hard copies. Study it on your flight. Oh, and good luck. Okay, so now you know why I was packing. We're flying away on a journey. After the 11 hour flight from Los Angeles to Taipei, then a two hour flight on a tiny shaky plane, and then a long moonlit walk, the science squad finally checked in to the tiny bamboo inn on a small island in the waters between Taiwan and Japan. All right, so we've got there. We've got our bag of stuff. We're ready for this adventure to try and save those porpoises. Are you guys ready? All right, so let's see. This is the shack we're staying in and we've got our science squad with us. All right, guys, so now it's your turn. There's a reading response question. So anytime this comes up, this is something you're gonna do on your own. You have access to the slides from today with all of the reading on it. You also have access to this video so you can replay it if you need to look back. But your job is to answer this question. What is the job of the science squad? How do you know? You're gonna go back and you're gonna use evidence from the text to support your answer. So remember, you might be doing this on a piece of paper and a pencil to give to your teacher later, or you might be doing this on Seesaw. Just follow those directions from your teacher. And guys, I'm so excited for this journey with you. Remember, my name is Miss Lawson, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, fourth graders.